Welcome aboard to Newport Beach, California. Here is a beginner pilot's guide to the basics of Newport Beach, focusing on the harbor and surrounding area. And remember, Lane was created to provide a place for boats to visit, so be sure to let me know in the comments which port you would like me to highlight next. Newport Beach is in Orange County, Southern California, just south of Los Angeles. What is special about Newport Harbor is that it is considered one of the largest pleasure boating harbors in the U.S. This makes it a great destination for a visit or the perfect place to make your home port. The first recorded history of Newport Beach began when it was mapped by Juan Cabrillo in the 1540s. However, it took another 200 years before Europeans started to settle the area. The history of modern Newport Harbor really started in the late 1800s, when James McFadden saw value in the area and created a commercial port where the Newport Pier is today. This port was the largest business in Orange County at the time. However, it declined once the U.S. government built the Port of L.A. in San Pedro back in 1899. It was at this time developers started to come and dream of a residential Newport Harbor. That's when the development really started. The city was incorporated in 1906, the same year that construction finished on the Balboa Pavilion and Balboa Pier. It was also at this time that the Pacific Electric Railway extended into Newport Peninsula from Los Angeles to bring in tourism. The sandbar riddled harbor was dredged and the islands that exist today were created from the sand and the silt. Newport Harbor is made up of two sections, the Upper Newport Bay or Back Bay, which is a nature preserve, and the Lower Newport Bay or Harbor Area. Each of these regions are about three miles in length and are more or less divided by Pacific Coast Highway. Notice how Pacific Coast Highway moves inland and does not cross over the harbor's entrance. This benefits Newport because a bridge does not constrict the height of the size of vessels able to enter the harbor. This is a defining characteristic in why Newport is such a popular boating harbor. Above Pacific Coast Highway is the Back Bay, which used to be a water sports area without a speed limit. Today, it is now a nature conservancy. The area of the Back Bay, just north of the highway, has some boating resources, but mainly serves as a transition from the boating-oriented lower harbor to the nature area of the upper bay. This section of harbor is really only popular for boaters accessing the Newport Dunes launch ramp. When transiting this area, be sure to stay in between the channel markers. The water in the back bay isn't fully dredged and it is a popular spot to run aground. Now, onto the crown jewel of Newport Beach, which is the lower harbor. Newport's harbor consists of eight islands over its three mile long stretch of waterway. These islands and harbor are protected by an equally long stretch of peninsula which protects the harbor from the Pacific Ocean. Something that makes Newport particularly unique is most of these land masses are filled with single family homes. This limits the size of commercial marinas and in return preserves most of Newport Harbor's water for sailing and transiting boats. Here's a quick comparison of Newport's open water compared to Marina del Rey in Los Angeles. Notice the difference in design and lack of large marinas in Newport Harbor. Instead, Newport Harbor uses a mooring system with 12 different mooring fields and two anchorages. This allows for boats to sail between the mooring fields and retains the water area of the harbor while also maintaining the ability for Newport to have around 14,000 boats. These mooring fields should be transited carefully though because it is up to individuals to maintain their own moorings. These moorings are one of the few hazards in Newport Harbor. It is not uncommon for moorings to have floating lines that drift and can foul a vessel's propeller. For this reason, it is important to stay in the marked channels unless familiar with the area. Another hazard in Newport Harbor is its water depth. Depth of the water in the lower harbor isn't a huge factor to most boaters. However, you can see by this survey that once you leave the federally marked channel, some areas near shore can become quite shallow. Continuing the discussion on hazards, let's discuss the harbor entrance. Luckily, Newport's harbor entrance is one of the safest due to its large west jetty. However, this wasn't always the case. It wasn't until the Army Corps of Engineers built the jetties in the 1930s that transit into the harbor became safe. Before this, surfers used to ride waves all the way into the harbor, and while great for surfers, it was terrible for boaters. The surfers weren't entirely upset though, because the creation of the West Jetty also created one of the most famous surf spots in the region, the Wedge. The Wedge is an accidental man-made surf break that occurs during large south swells. Waves bounce off the West Jetty and form with the wave behind it to double in size. This isn't particularly hazardous to boaters, however, boats have been known to miss the harbor entrance at night, so be sure when entering in low visibility that you are between both jetties. The swells in the area are primarily from the northwest, funneling between Catalina Island and Palos Verdes. In the summer months, southern swells make their way up from Mexico, 
bringing with it warm water. This is also the best time of year to go fishing. The winds typically mimic the swell's pattern, blowing in from the northwest in the afternoons. Onshore winds peak around 15 to 20 knots on the stronger days. In the fall season, the area experiences what are known as Santa Anas, which are hot, strong offshore winds which can reach above 30 knots. While strong, the terrain near the coast tends to keep the wind off the water and creates some very flat sections near the coast. On to the resources. Newport Harbor has a wide variety of resources for boaters who are willing to pay for them. Due to the nature of the harbor being mainly residential homes, dock space in Newport is typically double to triple the cost of neighboring harbors. This trend of being more expensive snowballs into just about every aspect of Newport Harbor's boating resources. However, with that being said, there are a plentiful amount of vendors who service both Newport and the surrounding SoCal region. Newport Harbor itself has four shipyards, two fuel docks, and about a dozen yacht clubs. If you are a member of a yacht club visiting Newport, your best bet for a slip would be contacting some of the yacht clubs in the harbor. Transiting dockage in Newport is difficult to come by, but the city understands this and they've been working towards making Newport a more favorable place to visit by boat. If visiting, you can stay at the city's new Marina Park facilities, which offer a small amount of docks for up to 55-foot vessels. These docks cost roughly $90 a night, and on holiday weekends, book up fast. Other options are renting a mooring from the city if you have a way to get to shore. There are 12 public dinghy docks around the harbor, and moorings go for something like $1.50 a foot a night. These public dinghy docks are particularly useful because you can drop off and pick up on them but also, many of them have space on the other side of the dock for you to leave your tender for a period of time. All of this information and more is located on the city's website in the description below. If staying on board, you can also anchor in one of the anchorages, however, you are not supposed to leave your vessel. Docking at one of the many yacht clubs is really the preferred location if you are a member of a club with reciprocal privileges. Newport is also a great place to trailer in your vessel. Located north of Pacific Coast Highway is the Newport Dunes Marina. This is a private launch ramp which does cost money, however, it offers amenities like boat storage and washdown stations. Oh, and it's also the only option for a launch ramp in Newport Harbor. But once the headache of docking is sorted out, you want to have fun. Newport Beach is central in location to Laguna Beach, Catalina, and the Port of Long Beach. Of these three, Laguna Beach is the best location for a day trip while visiting Newport. You can anchor up in Emerald Bay, which is a popular boating destination, four miles down the coast. Inside Newport Harbor, there are many bars and restaurants that offer dock and dine experiences to boaters. You can also cruise the harbor, which is a great way to spend an afternoon, and will take approximately two hours to see the entire harbor. If you are a sailor, you can also participate in weeknight regattas during the summer that sail up and back the length of Newport Harbor. Once on shore, you can walk around Babel Island and see shops or head over to the peninsula where there are miles of boardwalks to travel as well as the fun zone. The two piers are the main tourism zones of the peninsula, and across from the Balboa Pier is the Balboa Fun Zone. This location has a Ferris wheel and many great attractions for kids and adults like parasailing and whale watching. Here you can also take the Balboa Ferry which shuttles cars and people to and from Balboa Island. If in town over Christmas, you can also catch one of the biggest boat parades in the nation. Wednesday to Sunday, the week before Christmas, Newport hosts a boat parade which has been going on for over 110 years. Everyone decorates their boats, and around 100 vessels go around the harbor together. This concludes everything there is to know about visiting Newport Harbor. So if you enjoyed this Pilot Guide Harbor tour, be sure to let me know. Newport Harbor comes highly recommended to anybody considering a trip to Southern California, and thank you for sailing with us.